Hello, this is Russell from Russell Tracy Photography, and today I'm going to be talking about what's in my bag. Um, I've actually got a couple different bags I'm going to show you. Um, depending on what I'm shooting, where I'm shooting, kind of determines the bags that I'm going to choose. Um, first off, uh, I'll get this thing out of the way here. This is my first bag. This is a uh, Think Tank Airport International uh, 2.0. Um, it's a roller bag. It's a really nice bag. It can hold a lot of stuff. Uh, the next set of bags that I have is this set right here. This is my Think Tank uh, belt pack. Let me turn around so you can see the whole thing. Um, I'm going to toss this on the ground here. Um, I use that when I'm doing like sports and stuff like that where I have to keep all my lenses right here where they're easily accessible. Uh, the roller is where I normally keep all my gear. Um, makes it easier to manage, uh, easy to carry around, stuff like that. I also have um, a backpack, a Tamarack backpack up upstairs. Um, it has all my video equipment in it. Um, so it holds the camera, the mics. Uh, the little lights, the little LED lights, stuff like that that I carry around um, if I'm shooting video on location. Uh, first off, I'm not going to be going over um, all the, uh, the lighting stuff, like how I carry the lighting, because that's different. It all has its own separate cases. This is just, um, if I'm going out to shoot something, uh, this is what I typically take, how I organize it, and what's in the bag. Uh, Another, another point, the bottom line is when it comes to picking a bag, you need to pick something that works for you. Um, you don't need to get the most expensive bag. This Think Tank bag, this is an expensive bag. This is a couple hundred dollars. Same thing with this belt pack. Um, costs a couple hundred dollars. You need to get a bag that works for the gear that you have that's, you know, that's going to last you a while. That's, that's the thing that you want. You want to make sure you get one that will last you a while. And by last few while, I'm not just talking about quality. I'm also talking about expanding. You know, if you get new gear, say, say, say you get a little camera bag that holds the camera and the lens that you have now. That's great. It works, right? Awesome. Well, next year you go and you, you buy a new lens. All of a sudden, you don't have a place to hold that lens. You got to buy a new bag, right? And then say, you know, a couple months later, you buy some lighting. You get get a couple flashes. You know, now that your bag that held your camera and your two lenses now doesn't hold your lighting. So you want to think. You know, if if the bag is too big, you know, it's 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 always good to think down the road. Um, get something that you might not you know need right now, but something that's going to you know carry you through the next couple of years. I mean. Obviously, I didn't start out with this bag. I started out with the backpack. It had, you know, I, I carried my two lenses, a body, two lenses, and some accessories in it. But I had plenty of room. You know, when I started expanding, I ended up getting this bag. When I sh started shooting a lot more sports, I ended up getting this because this was easier. Uh, so, without further ado, we're going to open up this bag and we'll see what's in it. Just... Alright. No. First off, when you open up the bag, the roller here is nice. I'll slide it down here so hopefully you can see it on the overhead. It's got storage here on the front. Um, I've got a couple little couple little flash stands here. Um, they're pretty handy to have around. Uh, extra cables. Here I have my uh, Koken uh, filters. So I've got a neutral density if I'm shooting landscapes or something like that. Um, and I have a Koken circular polarizer. So it's little thicker circular polarizer. Uh, the Kokens are a little bit more expensive than your normal just thread on. 
Um, but I like them because you can stack these. Uh, you use this little adapter here, uh, and you can stack these up in here, hook them right to your lens, still turn, whole nine yards. Um, if you get the if you get the Kokens, they come in these nice cases, but you're gonna want to use a rubber band because after after a while the cases become a little a little worn in and they start to fall apart. Well, not fall apart. They start to come apart easy. Uh, so first off, we're gonna start with my cameras and bodies. Um, sitting right here in this this section here, I've got my Black Rapid. Um, I don't even know which one this one is. I think this is the RS7. I don't remember. This thing is great. I use it for everything. Um, next, we have the D3 with the 2270 on it. Um, I always have this. It always has a full battery in it. always has two cards in it ready to go. This is my go-to body, uh, body lens combination, so if I need to grab it, put it on, hook the strap in, turn it on, it's good to go. So, set that down there for a second. Next, I always carry a second body. One, because when I shot sports, I'd have a long lens and a either wide angle or um, medium zoom, so I'd either have the 28-70 or the 80-200 along with the three or four hundred millimeter prime that I was shooting. Uh, sports, you really need to get a second body if you're shooting anything um, uh, professionally. Um, is it necessary? No. Does it make your life a lot easier? Definitely. Um, so this is a Nikon D300. I have the adapter in here so it takes the same batteries as my D3. Um, let me set that down here. This little guy here, this is a filter removal tool. Um, as crazy as it sounds, these are actually kind of helpful if you get your filter stuck. Um, I typically just leave them in the bag, they don't ever come out. Next down the line, we have the 51.8. This is the old school one with the aperture ring on it. Uh, this is the 1.8D. So, great little lens, it's like 130 bucks. If you're looking for a first lens to buy, like if you have a kit lens, if you have 130 bucks laying around, buy one of these, they're awesome. Let's set that down there. Next is my 17 to 35 2.8D. This is the wide angle that I use. Um, so I got 17 to 35, then I have the 28 to 70, then I have the 80 to 200. So those, that's my version of the, the Trinity lens, uh, zoom lenses. Uh, next I have the 8200 2.8D, uh, another great little lens, well not really little but um, very versatile. You can shoot pretty much anything with it except for wide angle, um, portraits, sports, automotive, anything that you want. Uh, coming down this row here, uh, I've got, oh, we'll get to that in a second. I've got my pocket wizards. So I've got a couple different, got transmitters, receivers, and then this is the, uh, I think this is the plus two. Um, I used to have these all blacked out because I would hang them up all, of, all over like uh, stadiums and stuff like that. And with the, uh, the lights flashing and stuff like that. It's, I didn't want to be distracting to the players, so that's why it has gaff tape all over them. Uh, these used too, but I took it off. We'll set them down there. Uh, extra batteries. I don't have all the batteries in my bag, but they kind of sit right here. So I've got an extra battery here. Um, got one of the little Stofen lens covers for the flash. Always, 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 always carry extra batteries. If it's, you know, camera batteries or if you're shooting flashes, AA batteries, uh, batteries for your pocket wizards or your Ellen Chromes or whatever, um, whatever you're using, always, always, always carry extra batteries. Um, so mine are upstairs charging right now, so I only have one extra in the bag. Uh, next thing that I got, I've got 
a SB800, um, little flash, and then I have old school SB26, I believe. Yep, this is the SB26. These are great flashes. These are, um, uh, if you're doing, if you're doing like strobus style, these things are phenomenal, and you can buy them used for pretty cheap. The SB800 is my favorite flash. I haven't really used the new um, 900s and stuff like that. I've when they first came out, they had some issues, and I just stayed away from them. That's as far as I'm going to go with that. Pretty sure they got all that corrected. Set those over there. Um, now this is kind of my accessory um, section here. So I've got these two umbrella mounts. Uh, if you want to put flashes on, like speed flashes like that, on a stand, umbrella mounts. These are what you need to use. I've got two of them in, in the bag, one for each light. Um, I've got a couple extras over on the side. So this cable and this cable. These cables right here, if you look at them, they've got an end like this and they've got an end like this. I don't know if you can see that. These allow you to hook your speed lights to this quantum turbo battery pack. I use these when I'm, uh, when I'm using the flashes. It helps the flashes recharge faster. You still have to have batteries in the flash, but this guy here, it'll, that cable will plug in here, plug into the front of the flash, and it just gives it you know, the extra power it needs to um, recharge the flash faster. I've got two of, the, two of the packs and a cable for each type of flash I have. Next cable, uh, just a little off camera, so you can put this on, uh, put this on the camera, hold the flash up, um, shoot like that. When I did some club photography, I bought that for that so I could walk around with the speed light. Uh, the Gary Fong little Tupperware thing, um, this was given to me. It's kind of cool. I lost the top. Still works pretty decent. Gives it a nice soft diffuse look. Is it worth the money? I don't know. Uh, like I said, I got it for free, so it's in the bag. Okay, moving right along. I stuck the 300 millimeter in the bottom of the bag. So it's, it's in there. I didn't really have any other place to put it right now because I just got it. So right now it sits in the bottom of the bag. Uh, next thing is Seconic light meter. Um, a lot of guys will tell you that you don't need a light meter anymore to, uh, to shoot digital. Um, I find it helpful when I'm, when I'm setting when I'm setting uh, uh, flashes up. So I still carry one. This one has the uh, Pocket Wizard module in it so I can fire my lights by pushing the button. I still find it helpful to each his own. Um, next, this little guy right here. This is a color checker passport. Um, this thing's pretty awesome. On the one side, it has a gray card. So if you want to set your white balance, you can use this part right here uh, to set your white balance. Um, so what I do is I'll, I'll use the preset, I'll shoot this, get a good white balance, and then I'll take a picture of this, you know, next to the model's face or just set it in the scene. On the other side, it has the color checker side. So this is so you can create color profiles um, on, in uh, Lightroom or wherever whatever program. I think it works in Lightroom, Photoshop, and Aperture, I think. Uh, you can create color profiles using this side. Um, it's a pretty awesome little tool. Do you need one? Not necessarily. If you just get a little cheap, uh, cheap gray card, that will help you set your white balance. I like this thing because it's small. It's literally the size of a passport. So if you have like a US passport or um, whatever passport that you have it's literally the same size. So set that over there and then 
this, this little box right here, um, this has all like extra little cables. It's got sync cables for the flashes. Uh, note, ball bungees. These things are awesome. So you can take, I could take this ball bungee, like if I got to put a light somewhere, like if I was in a uh, stadium or, you know, a gym or something, or not a stadium, a gym, um, and I wanted to put a flash somewhere and I couldn't put a stand there, you can take these things, wrap it around a stanchion, put the flash in the middle, crank it down, and it'll stay there. I mean, they're, they're great. Um, this is actually the, uh, the little can that came with the ball bungees. And now I just have all sorts of little just cables and extra adapters and stuff like that. It's just random stuff that I really didn't have another place to put. It all shoves in here. It keeps it nice and organized. I'm going to shove everything else back in here. Um, last thing in the bag is the raincoat. Every Think Tank bag comes with a raincoat, which is awesome. So if you're shooting outside and it starts to obviously rain or snow or whatever, pull this thing over. It still allows you to wheel the bag around, which is an added, added bonus because it would kind of suck if you had to carry it. But it stays down there at the bottom. Um, I try not to go out in the rain too much unless I absolutely have to. Well, I try not to take the bag out in the rain too much unless I absolutely have to. So now the bag is empty except for all this little random stuff up here. So now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to show you the other bag and how I can load this thing up. So here's the other bag. I've got this, this little guy right here. Well, first off, before I do that, we're going to set all this stuff up on the table here so you can see how much gear you can actually fit in this bag. Set that little guy there. I'm running out of room on my table real quick. We'll just toss the cables there. Stack this stuff up here. Now you might be thinking, you know, this is a lot of stuff. Do I really need to carry all this stuff with me? The answer is, the easy answer is no, you, you don't. Um, I choose to carry this because this is typically what I need for, and last but not least. So all this stuff here, this is what I carry in my bags. Um, you can see it on the overhead. I don't think you can actually see it on the main camera. Um, let me pick it up maybe. That's all of it. So, probably just messed up the overhead shot. Oh well. So this is everything that I carry. Do you need to carry this much stuff? That's up to you. My thought is carry the least amount that will let you do the job plus anything that comes up. And this is typically what I carry to get that done. So if I need a 50 or I need a, you know, 80 to 200, you know, if you're shooting landscapes or it's, um, if you're shooting landscapes or you're shooting a house or something like that, you're probably going to be using this a lot. Well, what happens if the realtor comes in and says, hey, I want a really nice detailed shot of whatever. You know, you can use the 80 to 200 and get that nice detail shot. Or if the room's a little dark, you know, you got your 51.8. So it's, it's up to you what you need to carry. You don't need to carry all this gear. I do. That's just me. So now we're going to move all this stuff up off the table. And with the exception of the extra body, because it's normally on a lens, I'm going to show you how all this stuff fits in this other little bag. And it's actually quite impressive. So the other bag I have kind of situated into four different 
four different needs, I guess you could say. Um, obviously, the two of the bags are for lenses. So it's a pretty good guess what goes in those bags. So typically, the way that I have it set up is I've got my 80 to 200 in this bag. This thing zips down, done. 17 to 35 goes in this bag, zips down, done. Then the last two bags I have, this bag, this is a Hubba Hubba Heine and a skin chimp case. Um, so this one I use, I keep all lighting type stuff in here. So. I'm going to take two flashes. I'm going to show the flashes down here on the side. Flashes get shoved down the side. That works. Next in, we got the pocket wizards. Pocket wizards go right across the side like this. Kind of have to shove them down in there, but they do fit. Next up, all these extra, all these lighting cables. Lighting cables go in the other side here. Just like that. Just for good measure, we'll shove that one in there and top. That gets zipped down. Now this one's cool because it's got this, see this little speaker? Can't, I don't know if you can actually see it, but it's got a speaker and then a speaker with a with a line through it like a do not speak type thing so if you close this bag up you open it up yeah you can hear that well you can go and you can flip this tab down flip this tab down and it just stays over and you can just open it up it's not really lined up all the way but you get the point I don't really use it. I like having my bags being able to close. So, so that's that bag. This is the lighting bag. All the lighting stuff stays in there. Now we're going to turn around to this last bag here and there's not much stuff left. So first things first, we're going to take our, my accessory bag, my, well, my accessory box, shove it in there. All the batteries go in this pouch right here. Let's see. Now the only lighting things, these lighting, they just kind of, well, I'll show you in a sec. Got my light meter here. That goes on the side. This thing, I don't take it. It stays in the big bag. Um, if I'm using the filters, if I think I'm going to use them, they would go right down here on the side, but I typically don't. 50 millimeter goes right down here on the side. Oop, wrong side. It goes in with the batteries, underneath the batteries. Color checker passport goes in the front along with the memory cards. Now I was doing a shoot with this the other day. These things are awesome. Open up, got room for all your memory cards. So memory cards and the other cool thing is it's got a little pocket here for business cards. So the color checker passport just kind of shoves right down here in the front. This zips up. Didn't show you this. This is kind of cool. I used this for a while. This is just a little white balance, kind of like a uh, Expo disc. It works okay. Um, it was like 10 bucks, something like that. I got it just to try it. Now, the Black Rapids trap would be on the camera. This would either be on the flash if I'm using it, or I would just take it and hook it through the little loop here, and it's attached. This bag gets zipped. Oh, forgot these guys. These guys just kind of shove right right here 
Right on top. Zips up. Last but not least, battery. Battery goes right here on the side. That's it. With the exception of the two bodies and the two bodies, the 28 to 70, which like I said is my go-to lens. So we'll stick that right there for right now. And then 300 and the 300 could go together. And I could carry those two. This would go around my shoulder, this would be in my hand, this would be around my waist. And the only other thing that I have is, and that, well the D300 and the D and the 300 mil, only if I needed them. Uh, if I was shooting sports, they'd be on a monopod on my shoulder. And then I have an extra hand to carry uh, light stands. I have a bag with light stands. So this is what I take. As you can see, everything in that big airport international bag all fits down in these little bags right here. This is what I normally used when I'm, uh, like if I'm doing a location shoot or something like that, or if I was shooting sports. Now obviously, if, depending on what I'm shooting, if I'm shooting sports, I'm not gonna take all the flashes with me. Um, I'm not gonna take, you know, a lot of the stuff. So I do, I do cater these bags to what I'm shooting. Um, but that's it. This is, uh, these are my two bags. Um, if you have any questions about Think Tank or you want to buy Think Tank bags and you're like, hey, which one should I buy? Shoot me a comment, send me a message, something like that. Um, like I said in the beginning, this isn't an ad for Think Tank. I choose to use Think Tank. I think they're, they're good bags. Uh, they do what I need them to do. Choose a bag that fits what you need with the expansion that you want. So don't just buy a tiny little bag and buy more gear and have to buy a new bag. That's what you don't want to do. But these are my bags. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, let me know. Don't forget to uh, rate and subscribe. This is Russell with Russell Tracy Photography. Have a good day.